Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens, the screenwriting step-by-step -step project, episode 182, chapter 182. My name is Glenn Gers, and I come to you every afternoon, Monday through Friday, if I can make it, at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, to let you share my screen, look over my shoulder as I write a script. I do this in order to try and teach a part of screenwriting that I think is kind of undertaught, which is the day-to-day, -day, line by line, page by page, actual constructing of a script. Doesn't matter what kind of script it is. I'm talking about the process of turning ideas and thoughts and feelings into outline steps parts of a rough draft, scenes on a page. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to do all of that by letting you watch me do what I do. Uh, this is not the only way to do it. It's not the best way to do it. It's just some practical tricks and tips I have learned in a 25-year career writing movies and TV. I thought it might help you to watch uh, you don't have to watch all of them, 182 hours, way too much for you to watch all of. Just drop in here and there, see how the process works, because that's really all I'm trying to talk about here, the process. Just what makes a script, what is a script built out of, lines, scenes, bits of dialogue, bits of description. How do you make those? How do you get those out of your head onto the page? So, that is what we are here for, but if you are trying to get some practical tips on practical subjects, you might want to take a look at my channel. This is a little screenshot of the important part of my channel. These are screenwriting essentials, screenwriting tools, craft and skills, and the process being a writer. These are the little videos I did that are lessons, about 10 minutes long, on the topic that the thumbnail says, instinct, Use what you have, dramatic action, genre, flashbacks. I tried to distill what I had down into the most practical, useful tips that I could give you. I really don't believe in some grand universal theory. I believe in doing the work, figuring out for yourself, because everybody is different. Every single writer has to work out their own vision in their own process for their own plan and every project is different. So don't try to fit into some formula. Try to figure out what are the steps you need to take to get it from feelings and thoughts to words on pages. That is the deal here. Good afternoon, Mike. Yes, I see that you are slowly going through the videos because I get the message when you write. Thank you. Hi, 99 Precinct. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Tavana. Yes. Um, yes, Daniel Pink does talk about that, and storytelling is, without question, the name of the game. Um, everybody has their own way of doing it, and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try and, oh, let's, let's just get started with some script writing. Um, I'm going to open up my document. Um, I have heard about Daniel Pink. He sort of came along after I was already writing professionally, so... I, didn't actually, I haven't actually read much of him, honestly. Uh, most of the, the famous screenwriting teachers, I don't actually know they're teaching <laughs> because uh, I already was screenwriting by the time that they came along. When I started out, there really weren't much in the way of screenwriting teachers. There was the William Goldman book, which is not really that much of a how-to book, and there was the Sid Field book, which was magnificent. Uh, in days later, I, uh, there's a, a guy, Walter, Richard Walter, uh, there's Michael Hogue. I, I read those, um, or parts of them, uh, read parts of Truby. Uh, I have trouble with the grand theorists. Uh, not that I don't think they're interesting, but I just don't think they're that helpful. Um, when I'm writing, I don't really want to have to conceive of a grand theory of storytelling. I just want to know, how do I make this thing into a scene? How do I fix this plot problem? How do I make this dialogue make more sense? That's what I'm looking for. And, and ideally, I would get like a little two-minute how-to video like they do for cooking, where they're like, here, this is how you scramble an egg. You do this, then you do this, then you do this. That's what I'm always looking for when I'm trying to solve a problem. And so that's what I'm trying to give you guys. Hey, Kitchy. Okay. 
So, if I recall, uh, we were well into the, the climactic scene where Deacons calls in. Um, and so now, uh, hey, Gene, good to see you. Got some regulars here being, being supportive and friendly. Um, hello, Biram. Very good to see you here with your Attack on Titan icon. Um, okay. Only semi-apologetic. Uh, okay. Was that some people? You know what? That's obvious. Don't need that. Okay. Okay, let's see. I'm just I'm just tinkering a bit here. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, reading suspect, I, really, I do not know what that is, but it sounds interesting. And Eric Roth is a fascinating and terrific writer. Um, uh, smart guy has gotten, has gotten to explore a lot of topics in ways that most of us would never get to do. So, damn, what is, what is suspect 87 and where did you find it? Um, what do they want? What is it? Yes, those are those are the most useful questions I know. <laughs> yeah, um, there. It's okay. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to put things down because I don't. I think you 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 never know where you're going to find something valuable. Seriously, every single day I get little bits of valuable something from all sorts of places. So I don't like to say like this is not worthwhile. Uh, for me, at the times that I have tried to uh, read those books, I found them not useful for me. Um, however, I got to say, I have even in the the when I was looking at James Trub John Truby John Truby um, and and McKee, I only got a little way into them. But I remember reading them and saying like, "Oh, that sentence seems to me very useful." And then they'd be like <laughs> down the page would be like, "Okay, that sentence seems to like just theoretical bullshit." Uh, so you never know. Take the pieces that are good for you. That's the most important thing. Read and study everything you can, everything you can find time for after you work. This is super duper important. Write first, study after. Do not wait <laughs> to write. Do not say, I'm going to write after I know how to do it. You can only find out how to do it by writing. So write first. Study in your downtime. Research in your downtime. But always write first. Don't think, ah, you know, I'm going to read this how to write book and it's going to inspire me and then I'm going to go write. Uh -uh. Write first. Figure out your questions. Figure out your problems. You know, reading somebody's brilliant, you know, uh, screenwriting theory that solves a problem you don't have, not that good for you. Okay. And everybody has different problems and everyone has different problems at different times. It's not like you'll always have the same problem. You're going to be solving a problem and that'll bring you to another problem. 
So you don't want to live your whole life thinking, oh, there's like an answer and it's then you're done and then you start writing. That's just not how it works. Hello, Rachel. Yeah, yeah, it, th that's good. What's the verb? That is one of my favorite questions, which is really from acting. Uh, no, I probably won't read Babylon actually for a while because um, I, I was curious about Babylon because I am writing a fiction project also set in early Hollywood or partly in early Hollywood. And and so I was just like greedy to, to know what other people were doing. This is kitschy. I read a bunch. Some can get you started, but you have to write. So read some scripts, reevaluate, write some more, read a book, mostly write more. You see, this is, this is kitschy has been listening to me. I appreciate that. Um, how do you copyright your work so it's not stolen? You go to, you, you Google copyright. <laughs> Google, how do you copyright? If you are, and I believe you are, Mike, in the United States, you go to copyright.gov, and there will be instructions there. And unfortunately, they charge you a bunch of money. Um, copyright.gov. Or you can also, it's less, uh, hold on, let me see, there we go copyright.gov and wga.org. You go to those places. Copyright is where you copyright. Writers Guild is where you register. Registering is a lot cheaper, but it only lasts a couple of years. Um, but either one will work. They will send you a little receipt for your PDF saying, we got it. We uh, you. This is proof that you wrote it, kind of. All right. Um, and, and Natasha, I know that I did not have to warn you <laughs> not to wait till writing. Uh, yes, of course, my videos are the biggest help. Obviously. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, oh, update the outline and rewrite. That's it. That's it. Okay. Speaking of which, let's do that. Um, Serial killers from home and office. Okay. So you're just, so it's just. Club, a form of entertainment. So it's all right. I think like a club. So it's just a form of entertainment for a bunch of people with nothing better to do. Ow. <laughs> Ow, mean. Uh, so it's just a form of entertainment. Or a bunch of people with nothing better to do. For a bunch of uh, lonely bored, lonely bored people. Hmm. No, honestly, if the outline didn't work first try, I would get stuck. Now I trust the process. Well, that is so good to hear. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, the, Kitchy, this is this is fantastic. Yes, the answers appear like little miracles if you trust the process and keep working. Little steps, plug away, as you said. That's great to hear. That my work here is done. I have. I feel so gratified to know that you guys are actually getting help out of what I am saying. Because the honest purpose of this has not been to publicize me 
if there was a way to do this where I wasn't a, even in it, I promise you I would do that. Um, and, and in fact, fairly soon I will stop doing this because I will have said what I have to say. So therefore, it is so great. Like, talk about your payback, your payoff, your reason to do things. Thank you. Uh, hi, Roddy. All right. Um, here's the thing. Do we really need to get the whole crew in here? Um, Cause I've got this, this bit where, you know what? I think that this is, this was bothering me before. And I think I'm, I'm solving something as we speak. Um, my thought was I want, um, I want the, the group to be in on it. But the truth is, there's too much going on. Um, and, oh, that's right. Um, my meeting with potential agent is tomorrow. Yes, I know. Congratulations. And any advice? I sent my work to them and uh, should be read. Yeah, well, yeah, they should have read it. If they, if they haven't read it, uh, they, they shouldn't be meeting with you. Um, Advice, listen. <laughs> uh, advice, have things planned. Like they are going to say, what are you doing next? Uh, they are going to say, we like what you have done so far. What are you thinking of doing next? What, what direction do you think you want to go in? And you should have thoughts about that, but not be crazy set on them because they're going to have thoughts on what they think you should do. And you want to be able to listen to them because that is their job. And if you're going to work with them, you want to at least try to take into account what they say, um, especially early on when you don't know that much about the business. So uh, the answer is um, tell them what kind of things you think you would like to do, what kind of things you think you're good at, what kind of things you think you could start doing now, and then uh, find out what they would do for you. You know, I mean, remember, yes, you, it's a great thing if they were to take you on, but you have to ask, like, what would you do for me? <laughs> um, they shouldn't be offended by that. They should be like, hey, we do this, we do that, we don't do that. They'll, they'll tell you. Um, so that's what I would suggest. Um, and the main thing is just don't overplan it. See how it goes, see what they say, the best thing is if at the end of the meeting there are next steps to take. Okay. Um, suspect. Yes, Suspect. That was a movie. It was an okay movie, I thought. Um, uh, why are you telling us about that? <laughs> yes, Peter Yates is a phenomenal director. That wasn't actually one of his best movies. Um, but... Uh, Suspect. Yeah. 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 Um, wh why did that come up? Hi, the cat. How are you, the cat? Um, oh, Josh Ogle is here. Uh, it's first time you can catch that. Hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, you are incredibly, they're more helpful. You see, this is, this is, I, I really feel like <laughs> I'm on my victory lap here. Thank you, Josh. I am really glad that you are, um, you are here. Yeah, Film Courage. Where would I be without Film Courage? Um, I, I charge $400 to read a screenplay and talk to you for an hour. Um, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be doing that because it really takes up a big hunk of my, my day. Um, uh, but but that that is it. Uh, if you go to my website, uh, hold on, writingforscreens.com, there is information there. And you click on the contact me button to ask me questions or check about uh, my availability. Yeah. Next step, move to L.A. You know what I think about that. I'm, I'm so pleased that you're getting so much done in Memphis. Be sure you can afford to move here and, and are ready to move here before you do. If they say we've got meetings for you. Also, honestly, before I moved to L.A., like three or four times I came out, spent a week or two 
um, visiting LA, having meetings, but I didn't move. I, I, yes, the neighbor's gardener is busy at work. Okay. Uh, so I, the answer is if you can, if you are in Memphis and not in London or Berlin, uh, fly to LA, stay a week. Have If you've got the, this manager or agent, uh, they should set up meetings for you in advance. Say, this is the week she's going to be here. Set up some meetings. Damn. And, uh, and so, yes, that's that's a great step. If you get lucky enough to do that, super cool. We are indeed sending you good vibrations. The main thing is, it's already great that you're having the meeting. That's already a win. If this one doesn't work out for whatever reason, it doesn't mean that's the end of the story. It already means you should keep going. That's the point. Okay, so um, here's the deal. In this bit of dialogue, Zena... Zena says, um, Zena introduces herself, web detectives, we hunt serial killers from home. I mean, from home and office. I mean, hunt is kind of just a way of putting it. We also want to hear your side of it, of course. I like that. Um, now, here's the thing. When she speaks, he sort of puts her down. But then he says, why? Why would you do that? Um, and the thing is, <sighs> then she kind of defends herself, and then he asks a question. I'm thinking this is in the wrong order. I'm thinking that why is a better first response. Um, Hmm. I think I'm going to cut these two lines. Boom. Um, Um, you know what, why, why would you do that is, um, not working because he's basically saying, you know, when he says it's just a form of entertainment, he's putting her down. He's saying, I don't respect you. Um, he's also saying, I'm not scared of you. <laughs> um. So it's just a form of entertainment for a bunch of bored, lonely people. Bored, lonely, not lonely, bored. Uh, and you're asking why? Why would I change that? Why is bored, lonely better than lonely, bored? And I'll tell you, because for a bunch of bored, lonely people has a better rhythm than for a bunch of lonely, bored people. It's da da dun da dun da dun da. For a bunch of bored, lonely people, lonely people da 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 da. Uh, for a bunch of bored, lonely people, as opposed to for a bunch of lonely, bored people. It, it's just not as good. <laughs> All right. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, why it was interesting, but it's not that interesting. Um, now, yeah. All right, I already had them glaring. Um,
Magazine appalled. Uh, let's see here. I'm a journalist. I, what I need to do here is Norman has to respond to that. I'm a journal. <laughs> Over him. Appalled. <laughs> yeah, I love good dialogue scenes. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling, Natasha, that that's something that people like about your writing. Um, a good dialogue scene is just freaking great. Um, all right. Journalist. I'm a journalist. My name is Inorana. Da da. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so that was that's cool. She's like really pushing it. Um, <laughs> yes, that is absolutely true. Um, it's it, <laughs> um, it, when you're when you're writing, at least when I'm writing a script, I am all in there playing the parts, thinking about the shots. I'm just not writing out everything that I'm thinking because that would be too hard to read. Um, hmm.
the Zoom, she's getting and what I want to say is that supporting her her bold stand, her her daring stand. Bold daring stance. I see what I'm saying the silence as follows. There we go. <laughs> well, the trick is, uh, none of us should have a camera in their face when they're writing. <laughs> That's really the secret to all this. Okay. Um, what I kind of want to say is, this posture there. <laughs> yes. Yes, we're all that, that. I mean, the secret is that we are all essentially living in an imaginary world when we write, uh, at least part of the time, the, the creative part, the, the, the muse part, the part that comes out of we don't know where we are going into an imaginary world. We are dreaming or living in a dream state while we are typing and writing and thinking. Um, that one of the hardest things about writing is learning how to navigate the necessity of going into this dream state, this, this make-believe playland, and at the same time have a part of your brain operating in a functional, I'm writing a script way. Uh, that's learning that is, by the way, why I emphasize practice, because that's a thing that comes with practice. The more you practice writing, the more that this weird dream art thing uh, is comfortable. If you ever caught one. If you ever caught one. Have you ever caught one? A serial killer? A serial killer? Not so far, no. Have you thought about one? <laughs> that is great. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as far as Mike's question, people that have a plain language, uh, you know, uh, 
um, here's what I think. I think anything that says this is the way is wrong. <laughs> it's that simple. Uh, because the way is big. Here, let's let's get off the page for a second. Uh, here's my thoughts. Any this is like I mean like I love abstract art, but when abstract art says all art should be abstract art, then I'm like eh, 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 because I also love very classical portraiture. I also love comic books. I also love you know all sorts of different kinds of art. So therefore, landscapes. You know, so when anybody says this is the way that this art form should be, I say ew wrong stop you are you are missing the point because while plain language is certainly a wonderful skill a valuable tool and often especially in screenplays very useful it's not the be all and end all sometimes flamboyant uh and poetic language is really exciting to read um it also depends like to say to say uh plain language um, especially when you get out of scripts, because scripts are kind of a weird, narrow, and this is why I keep saying, please try and think about whether or not you could write something that is not a script. Hold on. Does it have to be a script? Are, the thing that you're writing, is there a way for you to imagine it in some other written art form? Because script writing is the worst form of writing possible. <laughs> it takes away all the good stuff and gives you very little to go with it. The only thing it gives you is that when you think about, oh, a movie would be cool, you feel nice. But the actual writing bites. It's terrible. Don't write scripts. I, I, I started this thing uh, to, to teach screenwriting, but I do have to say, I wish someone had said to me in 1982, don't just write scripts. It's lovely that I learned how to do it, and I learned how to do it very well, so I'm trying to show other people how to do it. But the truth is, writing scripts is a terrible, terrible art form. Um, and so therefore, uh, I would say, especially when you get into then the question of plain language, nah, you know, plain language, clear language, but not even then, you know, I mean, like, I don't think somebody should, will say that Ulysses is a bad book. I mean, actually, some people will say that, but, but the, the, the existence of that language, that flowing, uh, well, there's different, like, Ulysses has like 18 different languages in it. There are some parts of it that are very clear, uh, plain reporting type, right? Other kinds are sort of analytical question and answer, and some kinds, um, uh, parts of it are, are pure stream of consciousness. Those are all good ways to write. Um, and so my answer is, when you are writing a script, you should have the skill of writing a plain, simple sentence clearly. But that's not the only thing you should do. It's not the only thing you can do. Uh, okay. When you explain why she gets the thumbs up, the bold stare, is that something a beginner can do in a spec script? Yeah. Anything I'm doing, you can do. <laughs> it's not like I have like a special pass. Ooh, he's cool. You know, let him write stuff that other people can't write. No. Um, some say we can't explain why things happen. They are wrong. <laughs> uh, you don't want to explain things that, that are um, then otherwise uh, impossible to see, but I'm explaining it because it's something that's happening that the people in the who are playing the roles would want to know why they are doing something. Um, you can write. You can write what someone is thinking. You can write what someone is feeling, and you can write why something is happening or what you think about it. You can do all of that stuff. Just don't do too much of it. I think if you'll notice, um, while I said, um, yeah, actually, all I'm doing here is describing. Yes, I could say on the Zoom there are thumbs up and floating hearts. And and some people would get it. But I like saying this bold posturing because uh, not everyone will understand how postury that speech is. Um, so yeah, uh, the answer is um, people, once again, all these people who are making these rules, you can't do this, you have to write this way. That's wrong. 
what you have to do is know as many ways to write as you can and then work like I did for 50 years every day trying different things to get skilled at the use of each of those tools. That's what they are. Different ways of writing are different tools. And that's what you need to get the biggest toolbox you can carry. The tools where you have used each one enough times privately that when a task shows up, you know how to pick up that tool and use it. If I want to use the tool of saying what somebody's thinking, I know, well, I did that already. I shouldn't do it again for a while. Or I'm going to do a whole scene where I talk about what they're thinking. You, I need to know what I'm doing. Um, but it doesn't mean I shouldn't do it. This is the way, is a boo-boo in that case. The Mandalorians are wrong. <laughs> well, that's the whole point. Uh, that is a group of people saying this is the way, and then the Mandalorian himself is like, oh, maybe it's the way, maybe it's not the way. That's the tricky thing. The whole point is not everyone who speaks in a script is speaking for the script. They're speaking for themselves. Every character is saying what they think. So the people, the other Mandalorians are saying this is the way because they live according to that code. The question is, will the Mandalorian stay with that code? Um, so that's, that's cool. Uh, that's how that works. Uh, yeah, art, art manifestos in general, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to find someone who has like a theory and you should know those theories. Like, um, the the substantially idiotic lately David Mamet wrote uh, some books about directing, which are actually really interesting for screenwriters because they, they, they get some basic concepts of screen storytelling in his little book on directing. Um, however, he also has this absolutely stupid theory, which is a good theory as a director, um, about the fact that uh, he took a very basic primitive uh, Russian silent film theory, which is about putting together shots and the fact that each shot has its own meaning. And he, he keeps talking about how they don't have any emotion in the shot, which is not true. But his point was, you put the pieces together and they don't have any emotion. It's a terrible, terrible idea. And he states it like it is the truth. But it's a good idea to know. And it's not a bad thing to know. Uh, yeah. So anyway, the answer is, Anytime anyone is giving you a theory which says you must let write like this and you can't write like that, uh, you know, just take a second and look at all the things you have seen and say, does anyone break that rule? Did they get struck by lightning? <laughs> no. So you can do that. That's okay. The fact that this person doesn't think it's good, you know, I don't think it's good that it's not harmonious, or I don't think it's good that the guitar is playing too loud. I don't think it's good that they only painted with with uh, with a ruler. You know, I mean, yeah, they you might think it's good. That doesn't mean it's actually a rule. <laughs> it's not like the paint won't go on the canvas. It's not like there aren't any rule you can show me. I will show you a piece of art that broke it. All right. Uh, the script is a skeleton for a story or a novel. That is a great way to look at it. Just don't write the script. Write the story or the novel. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. I just write some scripts. Just don't only write scripts. And don't only read scripts. Read books. I really don't like there is a chilling pause. In fact, since I don't like it, I'm going to fast. You never answered. You never answered the question. How do we how do we know you are who you say you are? How, how do we know you are who you say? There we go. Look at that. Saved a line. Uh, also, just as hard. How do how do we know you are who you say you are? It's just a. Uh, how do we are? How do we know you are who you say? Cool. All right. Oh, I'm 
Let me just make a I'm just making some notes to be sure our description covers all the things we've talked about here. Why on earth would I call a dead man's house and pretend to be his real human? Maybe you wanted attention. Okay. Why on earth? Maybe you want attention from from a bunch of internet sleuths. From a bunch of internet sleuths. Only the killer would know, like from a crime scene, the police didn't make public. If I tell you something, only the killer would know. How will you know? How will you know it's true? All right, this is uh, boom. All right, this is actually kind of a good place. Just let me see where we are. This is tricky because now we're going to get into a really big speech. Um, See, I think actually he has to say, everyone thinks everyone thinks I, uh, I had, um, Everyone thinks I ha I stalked my victims. Stalked my victims. All right. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to stop there because we're going to get into a really complicated thing here. So, hmm. All right. Yeah, this is this is a waste of time. Oops. That I took a couple months to learn. Thanks. There we go. Okay. You know what? We are getting some place. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I assume it's a book to read because it looks like Angel <laughs> and Rule already wrote that one. So don't don't write that. <laughs> um, all right. So I think we I think this is a good stopping place for this section. Um, yeah. So um, let's uh, get ourselves together uh, to say see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday and. Uh, I think I'm going to be signing off a little early now. Uh, okay, so good to see you. I will see you tomorrow. Go write something. <laughs>